And we're fine. Okay, after taking a break from uh, recording the Mighty Morphin portion of the review, now we're on to part two Power Rangers Zeo. And basically, these figures have a lot to be left desired. I mean, until I get the Lightning Collection Blue and Gold Zeo Rangers, I heard Red is coming out for Wave 6, 7 ish uh, from Hasbro's uh, Lightning Collection. Until when they do pink, yellow, and green. I don't know what to do with these versions. I mean, these were closely almost as good as I hoped because after dealing with Bandai's oversaturation of new Mighty Morphin products, we finally got Legacy Zeo stuff, but not much, sadly. And of course, um, once you get all five Zeo Rangers, you get this build a figure, build a Megazord, Zeo Megazord. But I'll reveal I'll review this after I'm done reviewing the the six Rangers I have. Um, basically the Zeo Rangers they I mean I had been looking all for it for new Zeo figures ever since um, they were revealed back at 2017's New York Toy Fair, and when these figures came out, they had some good pristine color of gold on them when when they were prototypes. But when you look at the final products of the figures, sadly and unfortunately, you get this, like for instance, this uh, scent, scent of um, butterscotch gold on these. And how I had to achieve this to fix that mistake, I had to use a metallic gold Sharpie marker. But of course, you know, coloring in all that stuff that they left unpainted, even I did it on the Zeo Megazord. When I when it was left unpainted, of course, you know if I, uh, you know, touch my hands on the wet paint, it's going to smear off and then show this crappy butterscotch gold. The Zeo figures, on the other hand, I had been looking forward to these figures ever since, and these were perhaps one of the most hyped up batch of legacy figures um, for Power Rangers because I had been looking forward for them uh, for the longest amount of time. But until so for for this point forward. Let's go ahead and review them because, well, basically until when I get, you know, the rest of In Space and Dino Thunder, and then so I can get on with the rest of the Lightning Collection, get this over with, basically. You know, it's time to go Zeo! If only if I had my Zeonizer with me, of course, the Legacy Zeonizer at that. I'm not quite sure if I should go in color order or what, or go by Zeo Ranger designated number order or whatever. We'll just go by that in order then. So to kick it off, let's do Zeo Ranger 1 pink, which is Catherine. Um, basically, her and Tanya, aka Zeo Ranger 2, these two figures, by the way, were GameStop exclusives. And I'm glad that um, I managed to get the Zeo Rangers of pink and yellow. I didn't get them uh, last. I didn't get them two years ago from GameStop um, when they were available first hand. First off, instead, I got these off of Amazon for an arm and a leg, like thirty dollars each, because you know these were some of the most hardest to find, hardest to get figures of these two. As much as I can find the In Space Pink and Yellow Rangers and Mighty Morphin Pink and Yellow Rangers easily, ZL Pink and Yellow were difficult to do. But before I get the yellow, I gotta focus on pink a little bit first. So, Zeo Ranger 1. I prefer Catherine as the pink Zeo Ranger um, a lot more at, than Mighty Morphin Pink number 2 and Pink Turbo number 1. I know that Turbo, uh, you know, it was the last time we ever saw Catherine as, as a Ranger. And, you know, before she passed on that pink Z Turbo power to Cassie. But the pink Zeo was all Kat's costume. It was all her suit. This was her own suit. Um, because I get that, you know, her backstory of her replacing Kimberly. Um, because, well, you know. But this is basically a decent pink Zeo Ranger figure. This is my first time owning an action figure of, you know, pink and yellow. You know, the yellow and pink Zeo Rangers. Because another history, just like, you know, like I said before about my history of collecting Power Ranger toys during the Zordon era, I never owned these two when the original Zeo toys and action figures came out. Basically, you know, on a side note with that, I never really liked that the original, you know, looking back on the original action figures for the Zeo Rangers, particularly pink and yellow, I never really liked it how bulky and masculine looking uh, Cat and Tanya's figures looked back in the original Zeo 
uh, toys back in 1996, which next year, 2021, will be Power Ranger Zio's 20th anniversary. I'm 25th anniversary. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, what I'm, I'm thinking 2016. Uh, you know, 25th anniversary. Sorry. And looking back on the Zio action figures for, for them 25 years later, they wasn't feminine looking because you know how Power Ranger action figures looked back in the day. Like uh, Mighty Morphin and Turbo, I never got Zio pink and yellow uh, when I was a kid, um, when I was a boy, when I was a little boy. Playing with Power Ranger action figures, I never got all the entire Rangers, I just only got the guys, I didn't get the girls until like as an adult years later now. So luckily I would say that these kind of figures beat the original 90s uh, figures of them just well because I, I I just felt that looking at the original 90s toys of the female Rangers for Mighty Morphin Zeo and Turbo, they didn't look feminine enough and they didn't have that feminine build to them. They were they had all these masculine bodies, but then when you have, you know, like for instance, yeah, Tur Zeo and Turbo did have the automorphin flip heads for Cat and Tanya. Uh, back in the day, but when you have their feminine heads with masculine looking bodies trying to pass off as feminine That's what I didn't like, but this is why this looked much more feminine, but even though breast size not with notwithstanding and um, Another thing I have a complaint with these figures um, Is you know for actually all of the Zeo Rangers except for the Gold Ranger um, is that when you have the two um, weapon holsters for some reason, when I got these figures, the weapon holsters can't stick in all the way, but that's why they keep falling out. And um, that was another thing I had an issue with. So, now, as for the weapons, the only weapons they have, which sucks, but luckily when I get the Lightning Collection figures for the Zeo Rangers, hopefully when they do, um, they better come with not just these two sidearms, but also the respective weapons. Like, you know, I remember Cat had this little spin disc thing tanya had some tonfas or so looking or nunchuck kind of things i know adam had some small axe weapons and rocky had uh the tonfas of swords and tommy had of course the sword well of course the gold ranger you know trey slash jason had you know the gold staff because the legacy figures for you know mighty morphin zeo and in space we hardly ever get their main weapons outside of the Megazord piece, but again, I'll talk about the Zeo Megazord build a, you know, figure later thing. And basically, the Zeo Rangers are well painted by their basic color alone, and the visors, the visors are just on point. But when it comes to, of course, that disappointing gold, and it's still, I can still see that crappy, crappy cheap gold on these figures, and it still distracts me. And it seems like, I guess, that gold Sharpie marker of mine wasn't enough. And, like, I like the way how they did these figures, but I was just disappointed with the end result that the, the gold wasn't fully finished. They just left it the way it is, and that's what made me so mad. Although, I like the way how they did Cat, uh, uh, Legacy figure. I like that. Now, on to Tanya. Basically, Tanya as Zeo Ranger 2. Um, is the same type of figure, um, but like I was saying about back when I discussed the Mighty Morphin Pink, uh, you know, Kimberly's fi uh, legacy figure, you can't do any kind of, uh, l you know, upper leg movements with neither female ranger uh, that has molded skirts them, which sucks, but this time, the molded skirts on the, on the Zeo girls are more restrictive than on the In Space or Mighty Morphin and Ninja Storm Dino Thunder legacy figures for the girls of those Rangers. Um, Tanya's figure is more restricted, and you know, so is Cat. You can, I mean, you can't even get that much leg movement going on upper upper leg wise. Lower legs, yeah, you know, like all the other um, female figures for the legacy line. It's just there's just not much you can do with them. And I also like the way how they did uh, the head sculpt, the helmet sculpt of the Yellow Ranger as well. Because going by the shapes of each of the Rangers, um, she plays well, you know, that's the thing what's so disappointing with these two, is that you can only do much articulation on the upper, you know, on the upper body, but lower body is only the limit, the lower legs, the upper legs, you can't do much, which is tad disappointing when, you know, when we had these figures. Luckily, when I, when they do the Lightning Collection Zeo Ranger figures of yellow, pink, yellow and pink, 
Um, I hope they improve on that because, of course, there's some um, aspects of the uh, figures and their costumes that are, you know, that have to be made of rubber when Hasbro does the female figures. On to Zeo Ranger 3, Blue, Rocky. Basically, Rocky's only best time to be a Ranger. But since, for those who, you know, didn't care much for Rocky as the Red Ranger because, you know, he replaced Jason, you know... I would say Rocky did a you know did a better job as the Blue Ranger, but too bad his time as a Ranger after Zio was cut short because of course you know Steve Cardenas who played Rocky in the show you know what happened with him at the end of Zio and the beginning of Turbo, you know and you know seeing him being replaced in favor of the little kid you know you know favor of Justin and Turbo. Um, you know, Rocky, I thought he was better as the Blue Ranger than he was Red, but that's just my opinion. I mean, again, like I said, the only time, uh, like I said, back in the Mighty Morphin portion on the Red Ranger figure. And, you know, the only time Rocky was good as the Red Ranger was when he was, you know, when he had the Ape Ninja Zord and the Ape Shogun Zord. But the Blue Zeo Ranger is definitely his own suit. So that way you don't have to mess with what was Jason's original suit and such. Um, the blue Zeo Ranger. Now, in the original uh, product images, promotional images of the of the blue Ranger figure, um, the blue was a little lighter. Um, when I looked at this um, in the you know product images on online and stuff when this figure was coming out, but when you get the actual product, the blue Ranger is a lot darker. This is common with the other blue Rangers in the Legacy line, except for Ninja Storm Blue. Um, because of course, you know, it seems like when, if the blue ranger, if the blue color is darker, it's, it's masculine. If the blue ranger, uh, color, if the blue ranger's color is lighter, it's female. I get, so to distinguish what's male and what's female blue. Um, anyway, um, I also wanted to point out when I got these figures of the Zeo Rangers. Um, blue and green, when I was scouting out for these legacy figures last year, what was left of them before they would sell out completely because everyone's moving on to Hasbro and their, you know, in, in their Lightning Collection for Power Rangers. And I know that the Lightning Collection Blue Zeo Ranger is out. I will get my hands on that eventually. That and the Gold Ranger. This was the absolute difficult, hard-to-find figure for me. The hardest to get one. This or the green Zeo Ranger. We'll get to green. But blue, when I found this, I wanted to get this in 2018 at my local GameStop. Uh, some near, sometime near around between Thanksgiving and Christmas two years ago. Uh, but... At one of my local game stops, they uh, they were sold out, and whoever got that last one, well, lucky to that guy. I had to, I had to spend an arm and a leg just to get this Ranger, him in green, because red and gold was easy to get on Amazon, but pink and yellow just took up all my money to do, and so did him, him, he, and green here. But you know, blue is fine, but yeah, I still got that crappy butterscotch gold, uh, you know, showing and stuff. And I like the way how they did his uh, visor. I used to also have the Blue Zeo Ranger as an action figure uh, in the past when I was growing up too. Him, red and gold were basically, I think these, these, this red and gold was the only Zeo Rangers I ever had as a toy. I don't think I remember having green, but I do remember having a blue, a regular, you know, vintage uh, basic figure of the Blue Zeo Ranger. Uh, back in the day, you know, back because what I didn't like about also about the ZL figures from the original from the 19 uh, from the 90s uh, that remember those ZL Ranger figures that came out in the 90s uh, back when the show was coming out 25 years ago. They had these figures of the ZL Rangers that did that um, weird, awkward uh, arm movements and stuff with the karate chop levers on the backs. I, I never really liked it, those, but these were more on point for what they were for the time. But the Lightning Collection Zeo Rangers, uh, well, eventually, um, I hope to get all of these again, but this time with better paint and better quality and everything in between. And here's Rocky posing. Yeah, that's saying much. But again, I mean, there's not much you can say because they don't come with their weapons besides their sidearm and that little small p potential Zeo sword and such, which sucks. Fourth is Zeo Ranger 4 Green, Adam. This 
and Rocky, these two figures were the hardest to find for me the most because basically I had to get Adam last uh, for the you know when I was scouting out for these legacy figures of the Zeo Rangers while everyone was already starting on collecting lightning collection figures of them. But green and blue were some of the most difficult figures for me to collect and find uh, online and for cheap, you know, for convenient prices when they came out. Um, but even though, as much as I like Adam as the Green Zeo Ranger, but his figure um, is like my least favorite of the bunch simply because. Um, when it comes to his standing stances, his leg is severely bent a little and it's like crooked because when I took him out of his package when I used to have it, it was, it was so crooked like he can't even stand well and then his arm is like, you know, all beat up too a little bit like what the heck happened there and um, just everything in between. And also, the figure, the color of the Green Ranger for this is a little darker. And I was really hoping, oh god, these people upstairs again with that water. Um, and these people, I mean, sorry. And, you know, the way how they did the color on the Green Ranger, it's not like with Tommy's Green Ranger figure. The color of him was a little lighter, or maybe it's just the, the lighting on this camera or so. But when, when you're not filming something or take a picture of this, it looks a lot you know darker and I don't see why is that and this is one of the um, probably one of the most least disappointing figures and again I like Adam he's one of my favorite uh, Rangers but to see him chastised in a Zeo suit for the toy it's not good it's just um, seriously I don't know why the heck but I hope when they do the lightning collection version of this from you know by ha when Hasbro does the, the rest of the Zeo Rangers they better uh, perfect on what they you know what they probably saw from Bandai what a lot of fans pointed out when we got these figures and again due to the fact I ran out of ink on uh, my sharpie marker now that crappy gr uh, gold is now showing on this figure again as opposed to on the other ones because even though despite this was my last Zeo Ranger for the legacy line because this was the hardest the get figure for me, so this is why um, I had to stick with what I had to get with him. And finally, we get the Tommy Zeo Ranger 5 Red. And like I said, this was the first legacy figure of the, of the, of the Zeo Rangers I got back in 2018. And in fact, when I got this, the Gold Ranger, and the last two Mighty Morphin Rangers of the core group before Tommy's, green and white ranger figures when I was scouting out for these figures. The red Zeo ranger was so easy to get because, you know, this and the gold ranger because not only that, you know, in 2018 when I got this and the gold ranger, I had already lost interest in collecting Power Ranger toys because I think following the announcement of Bandai calling it quits on these toys, that's when I started to get the move on and get the Zeo Rangers and try to get the last of Mighty Morphin as possible and get what's left of Bandai's Power Rangers stuff before Amazon sellers will discontinue selling the stuff or whoever will buy the last of Bandai's stock of stuff uh, so we can have more of Hasbro's Power Ranger stuff in stock. And I know there's still some leftover stuff from Samurai Megaforce, Dino Charge, and Ninja Steel still up on Amazon and eBay, but they have it in much ridiculous prices because, known to the fact, we moved on from Bandai and on to Hasbro. Now, the Red Zeo Ranger, that being Tommy, I would say this was the Red Ranger that got me into Red Rangers in the first place. Nothing against Jason as the original Red, but I think that when I, you know, because due to the fact Zeo, Zeo came out when I was four years old, I mean, Zeo is what really had me really mostly in the Power Rangers, and I was becoming more aware, like I said, about MMPR. But... With Zeo, Red Zeo, this this was my favorite Red Ranger suit. And I think this was the costume, you know, despite this was one of Tommy's Ranger forms uh, after the Green and White Rangers, that the Red Zeo Ranger would be the, the Red Ranger that would get me into Red Rangers. Uh, and, and to this day forth, that's why I've been into Red Rangers the most. Back in, when I was growing up, I was never was much into the Red Ranger because I didn't feel like I was a leader type or anything like that of that nature. But I was more into the black and blue rangers growing up and tommy as the white ranger growing up i wasn't that much into him as green but i said what i said about the green ranger uh, with tommy as green earlier but when tommy became the red ranger in zeo that's what got me into being into the red ranger 
because as soon as I saw Tommy as the Red Ranger, that's when I started to be more about the Red Ranger. And it all led up for when Tommy was Red Turbo, before t until TJ became Red Turbo, Andros is In Space Red, Leo, Lost Galaxy Red, Carter, Lightspeed Rusty Red, West, Time Force Red, so forth. Um, and, and to that point forth, that's when I knew by the time Tommy became, you know, the Red Zeo, uh, Ranger, that's when, again, I got into being into the Red Ranger the most. Because I felt like I was like kind of worthy of wanting to be a leader type. And that's why, to this day, red has always been my favorite color. Anyway, you know, you got to admit, this is now my third Tommy figure from the Legacy line. Uh, until I get Dino Thunder Black, hopefully, probably get that on eBay, probably. Um, since Amazon is sold out of Dino Thunder Black now, since I should have got it when there was time left. Um, but... I like the way how they did the Red Zeo Ranger, this balance of red, this color balance of red. Um, although it's not like the kind of balance of red that I saw in the In Space Red figure or the Dino Thunder Red, even though I wish I had the Ninja Storm Red one when I was about to get the Ninja Storm Legacy figures before the, before Red and Yellow started sold, selling out. Um, you know, he does, you know, Tommy does look bad as Red Zeo since now I got all three of Tommy. I just need to get Dino Thunder Black and I'm done and then move on to Lightning Collection and then restart that with getting his Lightning Collection counterparts. Because although Legacy was fine, but Lightning Collection Red Zeo, when that comes out, I want to see how they've done that. And it will look much glorious. And I also like the way how they did the star on Tommy's helmet which is great on the Legacy figure, but let's see how that does goes when Hasbro does their version of the Red Zeo Ranger. But again, there's not much you can do with this or the others, because again, they don't have their basic weapons, like I said. But though, in that, if you went to Sa that year San Diego Comic-Con back in like, what, 2017 or so, they did have a Fighting Spirit 3-pack, I believe. Yeah, they did, a Fighting Spirit 3-pack. That was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, and they had a, a limited edition Red Zeo Ranger that did come with a sword, but the retail figure that you ended up getting, that being this one, you don't have that, you know, you don't have that sword, just this little small dagger version of a Zeo, of the Zeo sword, and that's what sucks, Zeo pistol so sword, and that's what sucks. So there, yeah, there's Tommy as the Red Zeo Ranger. Okay, I only got eight minutes left of recording at the time of this, but time for a Gold Rush, the Gold Ranger. Um, the main attraction of the entire Zeo line of Legacy figures. Okay, I want everyone to be blunt and honestly clear. I had to repaint the Gold Zeo Ranger long ago before I even got these figures and reviewed them. Because the Gold Ranger, I've, did, I've already talked about this back in my podcast you know when i used to do it, when i used to do my pod, power ranger podcast that when they released the gold zeo ranger this was supposed this is the kind of this was basically custom painted thanks to my uh metallic gold sharpie marker that's how i used this for the other zeo rangers but the gold ranger the way how they did him it, when i first got this figure finally in the palm of my hands I did not like the way how they made him so butterscotch looking with all that crappy gold to him because it showed so much more on him as opposed to on the other Rangers. But yeah, they still got that treatment too because I get this was a sign that Bandai was just not doing Power Ranger toys and was starting to lose interest now at that time until up until last year when they announced that they were no longer making any more toys and they had to put out push out whatever legacy figures left before the license expired because we were now getting our um, stuff from Hasbro now but going back to 2016 17 18 with these figures I really did not like the way how they did the Zeo Rangers with that color of gold particularly the gold Ranger and also when when I try to stand them up, he just keeps falling down. Maybe it's because due to the amount of weight there is on him um, in his figure. Because there's just too much weight to him. Um, because particularly his shield and mass, the, the amount of body mass on the Gold Ranger. Um, I like the way how they did his uh, gold staff. Uh, of course, I had to repaint uh, all that crappy gold that was on this. Because it, it, it just doesn't do the Gold Ranger justice. But of course, when I get the Lightning Collection uh, figure of the Gold Ranger from Hasbro... Um, I hope the gold is the gold that they did on their gold ranger is an improvement over this because um 
As much as I love the Gold Ranger from Zeo, but the way how Bandai did this was a massive slap in the face, spit in the face, insult to anyone who's a fan of the Gold Zeo Ranger, and particularly Gold Rangers in general, because that's just not the way how you're supposed to show majesty and respect for the Zeo Rangers. But I get that Bandai America, before they lost the license, it seemed like they just didn't care. As soon as we finally now start getting new Zeo stuff, even though it came a little too soon, too late or so, for us to get new Zeo stuff, but as soon as when, when they do finally get the Zeo, then, well, Bandai just announced that they're not doing no more toys. Well, sucks to be them, because they should have gave us new Zeo figures and other new Zeo stuff for the Legacy line, instead of pushing out a bunch of new Mighty Morphin stuff, but I don't mean to be that hasty about it. I like the Gold Zeo Ranger from Bandai, but the Lightning Collection one is better. Okay, real quick, one more thing before we wrap up this portion of my uh, Legacy Collection um, reviews of these figures since I got the entire teams of Mighty Morphin and Zeo. Although I don't have a build a Megazord figure of the original Megazord or aka Dino Megazord from MMPR, but I did manage to, once I got all of the Zeo Rangers, you're probably asking, how come I can get a complete Zeo Megazord from the Build of Megazord sets and yet I couldn't do that for Mighty Morphin? Well, I told you that uh, the original Red Ranger, the basic version of the legacy figure of the Red Ranger was hard to get for me. So I, that's why I had to resort to getting that metallic Red Ranger that came with his weapon that came from the V2 legacy line of uh, figures of the Mighty, the five Mighty Morphin Rangers with their weapons because the... The, the first batch of legacy figures for them only came with Megazord pieces to build their Megazord for their season to represent. But luckily with Zeo, I actually managed to do that, even though despite blue and green was a very staggering, uh, uh, difficult, you know, find to get those in order to finish this. Because luckily, that's why I took a long time to not do a review on the Zeo, uh, the Zeo figures um, as soon as I would do so with this. Um, now this build a Megazord, you know this build a uh, figure, this build a Megazord figure of the Zeo Megazord. It's okay. It's you know it's cheap, not much paint on there, but just the basic paint schemes of what the Zeo Megazord looks like based on the colors. Because due to the fact Zeo Megazord, of course, has a lot of blue to it and gold and black. Not much of overall colors. If only the uh, pink and yellow Zords, which are the legs, had uh, some a little of some color to them. And if this was, of course, this is the yellow Rangers, and this is the pink Rangers, because pink has one, yellow has two. These two could have these two pieces to the to the feet to the to the Megazord could have been colored yellow and pink if if could so. But since this is cheaply done, I mean the Zeo Megazord is fine. I mean, this is an all right, you know, Zeo Megazord figure to match up with the other Rangers. Um, and of course, there is some paint missing on the back with the wings of the Zeo 5 Zord. Um, some paint missing on the face of the uh, Zeo, Zeo 4 Zord, which is that Taurus. Um, but there isn't really much you can do with these Megazords. I like the way how they did this build a Megazord thing. But if only, see, I think this is where Bandai went wrong with these legacy figures. I mind, you know, six inch legacy figure versions of their respective Megazords, but they are just too cheap compared to something from the legacy uh, Mighty Morphin line with those deluxe legacy Megazords that they had, like Tiger Zord, Dragon Zord, Ninja Megazord, Thunder Megazord, etc. But instead of giving us the weapons to each of the teams, They'd rather give us these build a Megazord pieces when you get each figure except for the six Rangers. But when you get the core Rangers, you had to do this build a Megazord uh, gimmick. I mean, I get that this is where Bandai wanted to get the idea of trying to mimic what uh, Hasbro was doing with their build a figure stuff for Marvel Legends. But when, Has when Bandai did this for their Legacy Collection Power Rangers line, they should have, instead, you know, I minded the whole build a Megazord gimmick. But may, basically, they should have focused on giving us all their weapons and stuff. You know, basically, what could have been? And suppose we didn't have Hasbro as you know the toy, the new current toy, toy owner for Power Rangers. But sadly, we have Hasbro. But see, when Bandai still had the license to the uh, to this franchise, they should have gave us um, the, each of the Rangers' respective weapons instead of the sidearms. 
and this this kind of thing in order to build a new mega uh, to build a, a megazord figure which is you know that's nice and all but again they should have focused on the weapons i like the zeo megazord even though i ha haven't had a real zeo megazord toy in years but i guess this is you know despite this is like what seven inches taller than the actual rangers i mean eh, it's close enough Wait until when I do the Space and Dino Thunder Rangers and do build a Megazord figures for them. And so, in conclusion, um, I actually am happy I got all of the Mighty Morphin and Zeo Rangers. Um, of course, I'm going to recollect them again in the Lightning Collection because despite that the Lightning Collection right now is making these look like jokes of figures because... You see, I think Bandai went a bit too far making these a little too husky looking and too big compared to a Marvel Legends uh, line of, you know, Marvel Legends like line of Power Ranger figures. But at least Bandai, you know, you got to give them credit before they lost the license that they tried. But again, I mean, I think they should have looked a little, you know, looked a little further at how Hasbro did. But of course, Bandai and Hasbro are two different uh, company toy making companies, but they should have made these a like at least a regular six, six inch for the for us to tolerate these figures. But since they were like an inch an inch and a half higher than a Marvel Legends or currently a Power Rangers Le Lightning Collection figure, but the Legacy Collection they kind of did go a bit too far on the scale, the scaling of these figures. Now, now if I would go ahead and say which is my favorite figure of these of each team for the uh, Legacy line. I would say for Mighty Morphin, the Green Ranger is my favorite. Um, for Zeo, I would say the um, the Red Zeo Ranger, but then you see that's just picking Tommy. But in general, this was a good line of figures for what it was. But now that we got the Lightning Collection, this is just making these look like you know, you know, overdone figures basically, if you can put it, because they seem a bit. In fact, overdone. So the next time I do more of these reviews for the last of the Legacy line, and so I can move on to finally more of Hasbro's Power Ranger stuff, um, I will do the in space, you know, what's left of them, and then as well as get all the Dino Thunder Rangers because basically all I'm ever doing what's left of the, what's left of these figures of Power Rangers is Z uh, um, in space. Dino Thunder, plus, of course, I already have Mighty Morphin and Zeo. If I had the uh, three Ninja Storm Rangers, you know, I already have the blue Ninja Storm Ranger, actually, as a matter of fact. Um, speaking of which. But I can't review her if it's only just her, and I don't have, you know, red and yellow. Now, anyway, she's fine, you know, but this is all I have for the Legacy line so far. Even though I have to move on from Legacy and on to Lightning Collection, which I have for the most part earlier. So, let me know what you guys think about this review until I come back with the next two teams so I can wrap up and say farewell to Bandai's Power Rangers and their toys and stuff because I tried uh, for s over 25 years to collect a lot of good stuff and some of their crummiest. So, anyway, subscribe, drop a like, follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.